taught in every classroom in America. But the religious fundamentalists hit back. Tell me, Joe, how does he explain away God? What? Why don't you come to the science club meeting? Let him tell you. To defend their Bible against the biologists, they developed creation science, a bizarre fusion of scientific language and religious doctrine that they touted as a real alternative to evolution. Our eyes are amazing little instruments. But you know, they're only one part of the wondrous body that God has given us. I worry that this is brainwashing, not science. And I felt compelled to take a stand. My book, The God Delusion, has put me firmly in the front line in the battle between religion and reason. Can I sign in, Richard Dawkins? Hello, hello. I'm one of your biggest fans. Can I speak to the number one British intellectual? I've read all your books. Have you? That's very kind. Thank you. Thank you. Can I touch the hem of your gown? <laughs> The most powerful nation on earth is polarized. At this conference of atheists, I'm treated almost like a rock star. But there are sections of American society that would happily lynch me. Can you, are, you, are you religious at all? I mean, do you no, pray? Not. You're not. You're not religious at all. Do I look religious? I hope you die slowly and you burn in hell, you damned blasphemy. And you should realize that your entire life has been a delusion and that right now your destiny is all f***ed up, f***ing atheist. Go f*** yourself. You, sir, are an absolute ass. Your feigned intelligence is nothing more than the fart of God. You suck. Go burn in hell. Satan will enjoy torturing you. Christian living for God. There is a God. Her created all of us. The only one who is blinded are the unsaved and stubborn. Everything Darwin said is wrong and evolution has never been proven and nothing is evolving now. The Bible is the best book. <gasps> nothing of even comes close to its accuracy and if you think God's judgment is bad, the devil has worse in store for all unbelievers. No punctuation at all in that one. Doesn't scare me. I mean, I, I rather pity these people. They react in a way that sounds defensive and actually really rather pathetic. Ha-ha, you f***ing dumbass. I hope you get hit by a church van tonight and you die slowly. <laughs> but there's also an entirely different kind of opposition, slick in style and with a more polished line of attack. Wendy Wright, is president of Concerned Women for America. Wendy Wright. Yeah. She represents half a million evangelical women concerned about issues ranging from lesbians on TV to poor old Darwin. Hello, I'm here to see Wendy Wright. OK, great, I'll take you right in. Thank you very much. I worry that her organization would condemn American children to ignorance by attacking sound scientific evidence. Why is it so important to you that people not believe in a creator? No, no, that's not the point. I mean, the, the, the point is that as a scientist, I'm concerned that children in American schools and in schools elsewhere should be exposed to the evidence and allowed to make up their minds about the evidence. And we completely agree. In fact, that's why the, the, the challenge in America, whenever this debate comes up, uh, is teach the controversy, teach the evidence. Because as it is now, in many cases, school children are only being taught about evolution. They're not being taught about the frauds in evolution and the, the uh, lack of evidence in evolution. So it's actually us who are arguing for teaching all the evidence, not just the ones that are favorable to evolutionists. Well, you could say which controversy. I mean, Teach the controversy. Sounds wonderful, doesn't it? And it would be if it was a controversy between equally valid points of view but it isn't. I doubt if Wendy Wright would teach the controversy about the Earth being flat because the evidence for the Earth being a sphere is so massive. There's also massive evidence in favor of evolution, but she doesn't seem to want to know about it. Oh, really? And actually, yeah. you're, you're, the way you have framed this and your very close-mindedness mm -hmm. uh, really is a very good example of the kind of uh, censorship we see within the scientific yes. community yes. that won't even allow discussion about the controversy. If evolution had occurred, 
then surely, whether it's going from birds to mammals or, or even beyond that, surely there'd be at least one evidence. There's a evidence. massive amount of evidence. I'm sorry, but you people keep repeating that like a kind of mantra because you, you just listen to each other. I mean, if only you would just open your eyes and look show at the evidence. Me. Show it to me. Well, show me the bones. Show me the carcass. Show me the evidence of uh, the in-between stage from one species to another. Go and look at some, uh, some modern paleontology labs. Go and talk uh. to some modern paleontologists. Just, just look at that evidence. It's beautiful. The evidence for the, the transition between the reptilian jaw and the mammalian jaw. The reptilian jaw has several bones. The mammalian lower jaw has only one bone. And the other bones that were in the reptile have now moved into the inner ear. It's a beautiful transition. There are so many beautiful stories. I mean, you'd be fascinated. So, is there evidence for evolution or isn't there? Let me show you. I'll begin with fossils. There are now literally millions of fossils in museums all over the world. They've been dated and documented and the relationships between them analyzed. When mapped out through time, the anatomical connections can only be explained by evolution. All life is related in a vast family tree. Fossils also show how life forms change over time along individual branches of the tree. Look at these skulls. The so-called missing links show the growth of our ancestors' brains over the last three million years as we evolved from something like a chimp on hind legs to modern humans. But there's even more convincing evidence. There is a code of four chemicals in every cell of every living thing, DNA. Today, machines like these can analyze and compare DNA with absolute precision. So Darwin's theory can be tested. Is it true? Yes. The results match the fossils. DNA links all life through the code, and the more closely related two species are physically, the more similar their code. This is just part of the mountain of evidence that supports evolution. Some religious people just don't know enough about it, but some do, and their strategy is even more bizarre. They see God's infallible hand in everything. Well, the evidence that we have is the same for both of us, but whereas you might see fossils as evidence for evolution, I might well say this is evidence for a worldwide flood. Would you want someone like this teaching your children science in Britain in 2008? This is Nick Cowan, chemistry teacher at a well-respected Northern Grammar School. And he uses American creationist material in his general studies class. But you know it's not just fossils, don't you? The molecules of DNA, the molecules of protein that you look when you look at a mole and a rat and a kangaroo and a human and a monkey, they're all hard molecules that you can see just as you can in your chemistry teaching and they fall on a perfect family tree. It all fits, it's so elegant and you as a scientist would appreciate it if only you could remove your blinkers and look at it as a scientist should. How old do you think the world is by the way? Uh, I don't have a... Uh, if I said uh, l less than 6,000 years you'd probably feel this man is crazy but I've had a look at this. I don't know. The dating methods we have are flawed in their methodology. You are a teacher of science in a, in a major British school and you think that the Earth is less than 10,000 years old? Yes, I do. I would rather believe God who was there, who's told us, <laughs> than scientists who are fallible, who don't know the past, who weren't there. And again, all I'm doing is... This is a classic old chestnut. God is infallible. Therefore, the Bible is right. 